The new generation of ASUS Strix GPUs are, in my opinion, the best looking line of cards that have come out recently with their subtle black design and fantastic implementation of the Aura RGB lighting. However, looks can be deceiving, which is why reviewers exist in the first place. Up on the test bench today for examination is the ASUS Strix GTX 1070 OC Edition. Let's see if this card performs as good as it looks. The Strix 1070 features the aforementioned black design scheme with RGB LED lighting on the back plate, side, and top shroud of the card. The RGBs are part of ASUS's Aura lighting setup, which can be controlled by the Aura utility downloadable from the website. Also implemented on the Strix cards are the dual 4-pin fan headers on the end of the card so that you can have your chassis fans to only spin up when the GPU is under load, thereby eliminating both excess noise and wasted power when your system is only playing Minesweeper. For I.O., ASUS has decided to implement dual DisplayPort 1.3, 1 DVI-D, and two HDMI ports. ASUS decided to go with dual HDMI instead of triple DisplayPort for the sake of VR since it's highly likely that users are utilizing an HDMI monitor, but VR headsets are pretty much exclusively run on HDMI. It was a pretty effective solution for when ASUS South Africa sent over the HTC Vive for me to test out. Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! Get! Get! Go on! Get! For cooling, the Strix cards come with the ASUS Direct CU3 copper heat pipes cooled by triple wing blade fans, which provided a max temp of 68 degrees Celsius during all of my gaming and benchmarking, which is only 2 degrees above the MSI Gaming X that I've previously tested. For power, the Strix 1070 implements a 6 plus 1 power phase design and only requires a single 8-pin PCIe power connector. With regards to core clocks on the Strix OC, the card comes with a gaming mode and an OC mode, with the OC having to be activated in ASUS's GPU Tweak 2, which is fine if you already have GPU Tweak 2 installed, but annoying if you already have a preferred overclocking software. It's even more of a frustration since the Aura lighting isn't implemented into GPU tweak and you have to download a separate utility for both instead of being able to unify it in a single place. My frustrations with ASUS's software implementation out of the way, my card was in OC mode for the duration of my testing and that comes with a base clock of 1657MHz, a boost of 1860MHz, and a memory clock of just over 8GHz on the 8GB of GDDR5 VRAM. In actual testing, thanks to GPU Boost 3.0, my actual clock speeds fluctuated from 1987MHz to 2012MHz, usually settling in at the 2GHz mark exactly. Converting those specs into FPS, the Strix 1070 OC Edition did pretty well. It beat out the MSI Gaming X 1070 in every single game in my testing suite by anywhere from half a frame per second to a few FPS. Keep note that these benchmarks were performed before Vulkan was released for Doom, so only the OpenGL numbers are represented here. Overall, the Strix 1070 OC Edition performed exceptionally well for a 1070. However, based on current US and South African pricing, the Strix 1070 OC is a slightly worse value than its MSI counterpart due to its increased price of $20 in the States and 500 Rand in South Africa. But even with the slightly lower value per frame rate, it's still a fantastic card to grab for maxed out 1440p, ultra high frame rate 1080p, or slightly reduced detail 4K gaming. For me, the ASUS Strix GTX 1070 OC Edition is the complete package. Its high clock speeds mean higher frame rates, it has great cooling, a superb implementation of RGB LEDs, and some extra features such as the fan headers and second HDMI port. I really think that ASUS has hit it out of the park with their new Strix lineup, and the GTX 1070 OC Edition is no deviation from that. However, 
I will caution that since all of the new Strix GPUs look identical to one another, including the GTX 1080, 1070, 1060, and the RX 480 here, you have to make sure you're buying the correct GPU. Not only does each card look the same, but ASUS has gone so far as making both regular versions of the Strix as well as OC mode variants. Make sure you check the box and description of the card that you're buying to make sure you're not paying OC mode prices for the normal card. The OC mode is going to have OC on the box, whereas the normal Strix card will not. That's not a complaint, just a warning for anyone looking to pick up these cards. The main difference between the OC and non-OC Strix cards is one of the specified clock speeds, with the 1070 Strix having nearly 140 MHz difference between the two SKUs. However, since I haven't tested a non-OC mode card, I can't comment as to how much of that delta can actually be made up for by GPU boost. But regardless of all of that, the Strix GTX 1070 OC edition from ASUS is a solid graphics card. And with that conclusion, I'd like to thank ASUS South Africa for sending the 1070 over for review. Like this video if you found it helpful at all, dislike it if you disagree with me or my conclusions or think that the Strix GPUs are ugly. I'd appreciate it if you could leave a comment down below letting me know if there are any games that you want me to include in my testing suite. I do my best to give a fair representation to all titles, but also want to make sure I'm including games that are relevant to you guys. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.